This is a short tutorial on how to do some of the calculations for the Bradford assay. This is a table from the lab report that you'll be handing in. And one thing that you'll notice is that we've filled in some of the information for you. This is our control, our blank, because there's no BSA in there. But at tube number two, we've added five microliters of BSA. And remember that the stock of BSA that you had was 1.5 mg per mil. And that, of course, is the same as saying 1.5 micrograms per microliter. So to fill in the concentration here, I know that I used 5 microliters. And it's at 1.5. That's 1.5 times 5 is 7.5 micrograms because the microliters are going to cancel out. So this is micrograms per microliter. I'm at the edge of the paper here and those will cancel out so that I end up with 7.5 micrograms and that goes here. Now the total volume is 100 microliters so I actually have 0.075 micrograms per microliter. Now of course you need to do other samples using different concentrations and we'll show some examples of that also. So let's continue on and do two additional tubes. Here are tubes three and four. In this case now we've added 10 times as much BSA. We've got 50 microliters. Of course we're using 50 microliters of water because our total volume in all cases is 100 microliters. Again, we're just setting up our standards here. In tube four we've got 90 microliters of BSA and only 10 microliters of water. And when we do calculations, similar to the ones shown on the previous slide, we've got now 75 micrograms of BSA and 135 micrograms. And of course now that converts when we divide by 100 to 0.75 and 1.35. Once you've prepared each of the standards shown up here, the top set. We, you ended up taking 20 microliters of each of those shown down here for the Bradford assay. You mixed with one, mic, one mil of the Bradford reagent and then you mixed those and waited for five minutes and read the absorbance. So we're going to look at that next. Of course our blank, which had no BSA in it, zero BSA in tube number one, um, gives us a, a reading of zero absorbance. When we read the absorbance for the other tubes, and again these are hypothetical examples that I'm giving you, tube two which had um, a very small amount of BSA gave us a pretty low reading of 0 0.073 at 595 which is the wavelength. For our Tube 3 that had 50 microliters of BSA, we got 0 0.52, and when we had 90 microliters of BSA, we had 0 0.97. Now, when I refer to the 90 microliters of BSA in Tube 4, I'm talking about the original standard. Now you want to graph these data that you have. So we're going to focus on our absorbance readings down here. And the second thing that we're going to focus on is our protein concentration. So I'm going to take the BSA concentration, which we determined, and the absorbance, and I'm going to transfer that information to make two columns shown here so that we can make a graph. And it's just simpler to graph it out in this way. I'm labeling this, um, the BSA is my x-axis in micrograms per microliter. 
and the absorbance at 595 will be my y-axis. Now that you've taken the data that you want to analyze, and I do this typically in a program like Excel, but there are certainly other spreadsheets that you can use. You can even go use the spreadsheets that are on Google Docs. Um, we're going to select these columns, and we're going to go up to the menu. And what I've highlighted here is I picked a scatter under charts, a scatter and you can see that I've highlighted the smooth marked scatter. And as soon as I release that, we will get this graph. Well, I'm very pleased that this graph looks as straight as it does. So that suggests that I'm in a nice linear range and that my samples were at a reasonable concentration, but the graph itself needs a lot of work. Um, I need to be able to label the x and y axis, and I want to get rid of some of these lines, and I want to clean it up a little bit. So let's look at how to do that first. I'm going to select the line that was my graph and go to this menu, format when I do that selection, it will take me to the format data series and notice that I've highlighted line and I've selected an alternative color down here. I picked red, it's bright. And then I'm going to hit the OK button and I'm going to do another feature and that is I'm going to change the marker fill. So now I've highlighted marker fill and in this case I've selected an orange color orange and red will look kind of funny but you can do whatever you want on these and I'm gonna hit the OK button again and my graph will look a little different now now that I've got my color set um, and I don't have the default X, uh, Microsoft blue that I don't like I'm gonna do the next feature, which is I'm going to add axis titles to this so that we have proper labels down here and here. And to do that, I'm going to again go up to the menu. You have to have your graph selected when you do this. And notice that I'm going to get the option up here of chart layout. And over here is axis titles. You can do other obviously all these other features, but we're going to focus just on axis titles right now. And when we do that, we can do both the X and the Y axis. And as you can see, I've already done this. I've labeled um, BSA concentration in MIGS per mil, and I've labeled the vertical axis absor absorbance at 595 nanometers. And this is your way of communicating with other scientists so that if they look at your graph now they will know exactly what was done to get to this point. Now I want to work on the scales um, and we've done this before in graphs earlier in the semester. I showed you how to do this but in this case I actually want to get rid of these lines that are to the left of my um, zero point because I, I don't like the way this looks. So the way to do that is in either the horizontal or the vertical, you want to select this line. So for the horizontal axis, we would select this line, and for the vertical, we would select this line. So I'll show you what that looks like first. If we look at the vertical axis scale, and that's what this menu, um, this is the menu that pops up when you select on that line. Notice that we're on scale up here. And it's showing our scale going from 0 to 1.2. And that's fine in this case. I'm not going to change that, although you could if you wanted to. You, Our highest data point was slightly less than 1, so you could change the maximum to 1.0 if you wanted to. And then we hit OK. And we're going to now look at the other axis, the horizontal axis and that was the axis that was protruding off to the left. And notice that on this scale 
the minimum is showing up at minus 0 0.2, and I don't want that. We don't really need data in the negative range, so we're going to get rid of that. And we do that by simply putting in a 0 for that minimum, and we hit OK. And now our graph will turn out looking a little bit cleaner without the um, data points that were off to the left of the zero marker. And it's looking a little bit better. Now we want to select this line, the nice bright red line that I made, and we're going to go up to our options, and this time we're going to pick Format Trend Line. And what I've selected is the type linear and we're going to hit OK and what that's going to do is shown down below because I I actually could see it in advance and that is it has corrected and generated a nice straight line using our data set. We had a pretty good straight line but what this does is make it a perfect straight line. That perfect straight line now can be fit to the equation for a line and to do that we're going to go up and select options and we're going to ask it to display the equation on the chart and hit OK and notice that it already is displaying the equation on my chart and that is of course the equation for a straight line. This is the equation that you want to use now to calculate your unknown. I want to point out a few things, though, before we actually do some of the number crunching. Um, this value, this 0 0.0058, is very close to 0. And the only reason it's there is because that's our intercept. And our data were not perfect, so when it made, when the Excel sheet made the straight line, we did not go exactly through the zero point on the x and y axis. That's why this very small number is there, to make the adjustment on the line as it goes through the intercept. Um, this is what we're really going to be interested in. And remember that y is the absorbance, that's what we plotted on our y axis, and x is BSA concentration. So let's look at that and use this number. We don't know X in the case of the samples that we were looking at in the lab, the unknown samples that you had. But we do know why, because you did your unknowns and you measured the absorbance. So let's say that we have a sample that you read and the absorbance was 0 0.38. So now you can plug that in here and make the equation 0 0.38 is equal to 0 So to simplify this, we'll do some really simple math. We're going to subtract 0 0.0058 from each side. So that gives us 0 0.3742 is equal to 0 0.7079x. And now we can solve for x x is going to be 0 0.3742 divided by 0 0.7079 and that's equal to 0 0.528 and x of course is in milligrams per milliliter that was what was on our x-axis So you have your answer. This is a summary of the 
numbers that I just went through, I want to remind you that, again, your unknown gave an absorbance reading of 0 0.38. And then using the equation from the graph that you generated from your standards of which you knew the concentration, for which you knew the concentration, you were then able to calculate the concentration of your unknown based on the absorbance that you read. And if you look at this, you can also, of course, see that if you wanted to go back and check your calculations and see if you were right, just go back to your graph because, again, if you look at the absorbance of 0 0.38, that's going to be right about in here. And if you take a ruler and go straight over and straight down, it's going to intercept the x-axis at about that point. So you could have estimated that it would be about 0 0.5, and that's very close to what you calculated using the formula.